Hey everybody. Today we're talking about the negative binomial distribution. This models the number of Bernoulli trials needed to obtain a set number of successes. Like, for instance, suppose we flip a fair coin until we get four heads. There's no upper limit to the number of flips that might be necessary, but of course larger values are increasingly unlikely. Let's think about that example just a little bit more. Let's let the random variable x represent the total number of flips needed, and consider how we might get different values of x. If x is 4, we must have just had 4 heads in a row. If x is 5, then one of the first 4, four flips was a tail, and the other 3 were heads. The last flip here, and always, is a head. Similarly, if x is 6, then exactly 2 of the first 5 flips were tails, failures, and the other 3 were heads. The last flip, again, was a head. More generally, if we had x flips, then three of the first x minus one flips were heads, and the rest were tails. Again, the last head comes on the last flip. For x greater than or equal to four, greater than or equal to four, because we need at least four flips to get four heads, there are x minus one, choose four minus one, or three, possible ways to order the four heads and x minus four tails. Let's generalize this just a little bit further. Continuing to let x be the number of trials needed to obtain now r successes, so not just four, but more generally r successes. Let's let p be the probability of success on an individual trial, and q, one minus p, the probability of failure. Then the probability mass function for x is given by x minus one choose r minus one, p to the r, q to the x minus r where x can be r, r plus 1, and so on. We're getting x minus 1 choose r minus 1 successes in those um, first trials. There's that many different ways of ordering the r minus 1 successes that we need. Of course, the last success always comes on the last trial. The p to the r is coming from the fact that we need r successes, and the q to the x minus r comes from the fact that the rest of the x flips, the x trials, have to be failures. Two important comments here. The words success and failure are completely arbitrary, and the negative binomial distribution can also be viewed as modeling the number of successes before a desired number of failures. So sometimes when you're looking at different sources, the rules of P and Q are going to be reversed. Additionally, some sources are going to let the random variable instead represent the number of failures rather than the total number of trials. Here's the PMF in that formulation. The difference between them is just that you add or subtract r, the number of successes needed, to get from x to y, to get from one formulation to the other. Okay, let's do an example. A child rolls a fair six-sided die until they obtain their third six. What's the probability that they need exactly 20 rolls? So we need to compute the probability that x equals 20 in the negative binomial distribution with r equals 3 and probability of success p equals 1 sixth. So of course, q is going to be 5 sixths. We plug in, here's the general formula. We take x equals 20, r equals 3, and we get this. It all simplifies down to about 3.6%. The name negative binomial comes from the fact that the coefficients of this PMF, x minus 1 choose r minus 1, p to the r, q to the x minus r, are the same as the, as the coefficients of the Maclaurin series expansion of 1 minus t to the negative r, at least when appropriately arranged. So here's that Maclaurin series. On the first line, it converges for absolute value of t less than 1. Re-indexing so that the series starts at r rather than 0, we get j minus 1 choose r minus 1 w to the j minus r. So you see it looks a lot like that PMF for the negative binomial distribution. This identity is thematic in calculations involving the negative binomial distribution. In particular, it comes up when we go to compute the moment generating function, and therefore the mean and expected value of this distribution. Here is the moment generating function, m of t equals quantity p e to the t, 1 minus q e to the t, the whole thing to the rth power. Here's the proof. I'm not going to run through it line by line. If you want to pause the video and look at it, I encourage you to do so. The calculations to find the mean and variance of a negative binomial distribution are completely standard. We take the derivative and plug in zero to get the expected value. We take the derivative of the MGF, that is. 
we get r over p. To get the variance, we take the second derivative of the MGF and plug in 0, and then subtract off the first derivative squared. This is the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x quantity squared. There we get r q over p squared. The standard deviation is just the square root of that and the square root of r q over p. For instance, in that last example, when p was 1 sixth, q was 5 sixths, and r was 3, the expected number of trials needed is 3 over a sixth, or 18, and the standard deviation is 3 root 10, about 9.5.